Of course, one important debate has been uh, about how to measure um, the progress made by states in the realization of human rights. Uh, which are the indicators that should be used in order to measure such progress? And in time, a consensus has been gradually developed around the, the idea that indicators in human rights um, should fall in three categories and that we needed three types of measures to, to measure progress. First, we have what, what is called structural indicators. Structural indicators try to measure essentially the, the goodwill of the state, what the state has shown in terms of willingness to make progress, for example, by um, the adoption of certain legislations, by the ratification of certain international instruments, by accepting some procedures of individual communications before human rights bodies, um, or by um, the adoption of a particular um, action plan that uh, defines the intention of the state to move towards the fulfillment of human rights. These structural indicators really measure um, uh, the good intentions of the state uh, by examining the legal institutional framework that the state has put in place in order to um, make uh, progress in the realization of human rights. But of course, intentions, though important, are not sufficient. And a second type of indicators are um, process indicators that serve to measure the importance of the efforts made by the state in moving towards the realization of human rights. Um, process indicators will examine, for example, the budgetary commitments of the state to fulfill the right to food, the right to housing, the right to, to health or to education. Um, process indicators will examine the percentage of the budget going to policies that focus on, on social priorities, um, the number of complaints that are filed by individuals that is a way to uh, measure whether the information they have about their rights is, is adequate, um, or um, uh, process indicators may, may concern the, um, the nature um, of the um, uh, policies that, that are in place and the, and the importance of the investment made. Um, that, however, still is not sufficient because it is all fine and well for states to have the right institutional framework and, and legislative framework, to have the right policies in place and to put money into the financing of these policies. But if the results do not follow, it means that the policies are not well designed and, and maybe they have to be rethought and, and improved. So a third set of indicators are outcome indicators. Outcome indicators that look very much like classic development indicators, such as those that are used by the United Nations Development Programme, for example, in the annual human development reports that it presents. Um, outcome indicators measure the results. They measure, for example, the percentage of um, girls and, and boys that have access to secondary education. They measure the number of people or the proportion of the population that um, is vaccinated against certain diseases. Measures, for example, the level of undernourishment or malnutrition rates in the, in the country. And by having these outcome indicators together with the process and structural indicators, we can see the realization of human rights as a permanent learning process in which misguided policies, policies that are not successful in, in achieving results, shall be re-examined, revised, improved um, by this permanent feedback that the indicators provide as to the success um, uh, of policies that are implemented. So uh, these indicators serve essentially not just to learn and to improve, but also to distinguish what the state is um, responsible for and, and what um, are the external constraints that the state um, is um, unable to, to overcome. If the process indicators, for example, and the structural indicators are very positive, but the outcomes are very poor, then maybe it is because despite all the efforts that the state puts into certain, certain policies, into the realization of, of human rights, there are constraints that the state faces that um, make it difficult for the state to achieve certain results. Maybe the state should be better supported by the international community. Maybe um, there is a need to, to improve the international environment in which the state operates, or maybe the policies are misguided, in which case we shall have to um, 
um, uh, demand uh, that the state uh, change these policies to achieve better results. So these indicators are complementary. Um, neither structural nor process nor outcome indicators are sufficient per se. It is their combination that is interesting and allows us to um, uh, screen um, uh, the unwillingness from the state to make progress um, or distinguish the unwillingness from uh, of the state to make progress from from its inability to to do so because of the lack of capacity and the constraints that the state faces.